Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in the Irido Select Solutions and this was one of the problems that I have given in one of the Olympiad uh, workout series previous videos. So in case you are new to this channel, right, so this is a question on uh, concept of superconductors uh, from the uh, Irido uh, problem book 3.323. Okay, so uh, here's the formal wording of the question. It's about a rotating superconducting ring in the external magnetic field. So you want to give it a try on your own. Uh, the idea is to solve this problem in multiple methods, as you could see in the thumbnail, both using a torque and energy methods. Also, there's a common misconception uh, regarding the solution that is shared in the internet commonly. So we'll try to uh, demystify that misconception also. And please do wait till the end of the video. I'll give you a practice problem, which I'll solve in our next Olympiad workout series. And it would be a very interesting question uh, to enhance the conceptual understanding of superconductors. Okay, so let's move forward. Uh, a superconducting round ring of radius A and self-inductance L was located in a uniform magnetic field of induction B. The ring plane was parallel to the vector B and the current in the ring was equal to zero. The ring was then turned by a 90 degree angle so that its plane becomes perpendicular to the field. Find the current induced in the ring after the turn and the work performed during the turn. So this is the language of the question and just try it out and we'll try to solve it using both the methods. And in the context of the solution, we'll also try to see what is the work done by the battery in the loop, okay? And what is the mutual inductance that we can discuss in the context of this formula in this particular situation, okay? So those who are solving it using a torque method, they will not be able to um, see the insight of what's happening in the last two questions here. So in case you have already solved it, so please do wait for the second method, okay? So here's the solution. So before we start off the solution, if you are a new uh, student in my channel, so I would request you to go through this video first in which I explain the basics of superconductor that is required for a 12th class student uh, to attempt school Olympiads and also the uh, high school Olympiads. Okay, so and also for JE Advanced, this concept is touched upon in the topic of EMI. So this is a video which addressed that through a problem and it was a decent one and you need to go through it because I'll be assuming the con concept of flux through a superconductor being constant. So I hope you have watched that. Okay, link is in the description below or on the I button. So let's move forward, assuming the flux through the superconductor is going to be a constant. So for the first question where the current calculation has to be taken, you could see on the left of the screen, I have drawn the initial condition where the loop and the field are parallel. And in that the current was given originally zero and you could clearly see the flux associated with this particular system is zero. Now, when you keep it at, uh, at a 90 degree by turning it, the current will be developed in this particular loop, which is called perennial current. And that current is generated in order to oppose the flux that is created by this magnetic field so that the total flux is still remaining zero. So if the flux is zero originally, it should stay zero. And that's the idea of superconductor. And so the equating that zero should be equal to the B into pi A square that would be created by the external magnetic field, that flux, and the self flux that would be associated with the self inductance should oppose each other and cancel off. And that's the reason why the currents will be generated here. So the value of the current after 90 degree rotation would be this number. Okay, right. So that's the first part, which is straightforward. And uh, let's now try to see the calculation of the work, uh, which has been done by a person or an agent, mechanical agent who has turned from this state to this state. Okay, so we'll go ahead with the torque method first. So in this uh, method, this is pretty straightforward. Most of the students would like to do it in this manner. Okay, right. So the flux uh, throughout is zero. There's no initial, there's no final, even at any arbitrary instant, when you're actually uh, rotating it through a particular angle, right? I've marked this angle as 90 degrees minus theta, where the angle has been marked between the normal and the magnetic field. Okay, um, I'm assuming that the theta is starting from zero degrees. Uh, at that instant, the plane of this loop and this magnetic field are parallel to each other, therefore normal will be perpendicular. That's the reason why I took 90 degrees minus theta. M bar would be the induced magnetic moment. As we keep turning this, the currents will start getting induced at every instant, not just at the end. Uh, it would be a continuous function of theta. And because of that current in a circular loop, there'll be a magnetic moment that I can call out. 
Okay, right. So at any arbitrary instant, if I equate flux equal to zero, not just at the final instant, the value of the flux associated due to the external magnetic field can be written as a dot product of B and area vector, right? So that would be cos into 90 minus theta because of the angle I took minus L into I, the self flux. These two should cancel each other, which should give you the current as a function of this theta as this number. Not only that, the induced magnetic moment magnitude should be I into pi I square. Okay, so that we get here, which is whose direction is along the normal using right hand thumb rule. Now, the torque that is associated with this induced magnetic moment and the magnetic field would be as achieved as a cross product. Okay, so the cross product of this M and B will involve a sine of 90 minus theta, which becomes a cos theta. So I into pi A square B into cos theta. Now I'll substitute this I that I got using the flux calculation into this, makes this into a big expression like this. Now, once the torque is considered as a function of theta, the value of the work done by that external agent, right? So why is he doing that extra work? Because this particular magnetic dipole moment that is generated will try to move or rotate towards this B, okay? And it will do it very quickly. So the agent has to prevent it from moving by moving it slowly. That's the whole idea. It should not acquire any kinetic energy, okay? So the work done against that is being written as magnitude of integration of torque D theta. So this torque has been calculated and then we are integrating it over theta as theta changes from zero degrees to 90 degrees. Simple sine two theta integration will yield this answer. Okay, and after getting this answer, you try to see the solutions that are given in the internet, you will carefully observe that this is nothing but half L into final IF square. So you, you saw the value of IF right in the first question. So this is your IF. So you try to plug that IF here, you realize this is half L IF square. So there are some solutions in the internet which are misleading and they won't do this torque calculation and they'll try to directly say the value of the work is change in energy and energy is equal to half Li square final minus half Li square initial, uh, initial current is zero. And they directly write this. Our answer is correct, but the concept is actually a misleading one. So if you want to use the torque method, this is the correct one. Now, Let's try to see that in the energy method, why this misleading way of writing the solution gives the correct answer. So maybe there are two wrongs that got canceled within this half Li square. That's why we are ending up getting this, okay? So, so I'm all excited for the energy method, which will reveal more things than the torque method. Okay, so let's move forward. So in the energy method, which is going to be in the next page, I know it's very bright right now. Just this is something that I wanted to highlight before we embark on the solution, okay? So, so I noted some points here and drawn some diagram for our convenience so that all that can be borrowed to the next page, okay, right? So the idea is imagine that this particular uh, semi, uh, sorry, superconducting ring, uh, which is getting rotated is in the external field, right? You should realize that external field itself will be generated by some system, which is usually invisible in our diagrams drawn in the uh, textbooks. Okay, so they, they generally draw a B, right? And that B should come from some source, right? So I have drawn that. I'm imagining that there is some coil system through which the magnetic field lines come out and pierce through this particular superconducting ring, which is being rotated as you could see. Okay, now I'll label some important parameters that I'll use in the solution next. I would say that the superconducting ring itself was given as this capital L, right, the self-inductance, but the system which is generating the B will also have its own self-inductance called L prime. Keep that in mind. Not only that, the link between this uh, system, which is generating B and the superconducting ring, which is being rotated, I can define a mutual inductance, capital M. Okay, right. So now think as this particular ring is going to get rotated, their own self inductances won't change because they're just geometry terms. But the way the flux of this links with this changes. So I could argue that the capital M is the variable as the rotation takes place. So this one also in order to keep maintaining the field, remember it's a constant field, which means the current inside this should be constant, okay? So there should be some battery, right? Because this capital M is changing, it will try to induce some things here, which will try to change that current, right? But the current is not changing. So you should also visualize that inside this uh, system generating B, there is some adjustable battery, which is actually trying to ensure that 
the current actually remains constant. So that's what I wrote here. This is depicting a system generating B containing a battery to maintain its current I2. I am considering the current inside this as I2 and it has so also got a resistance. Remember, uh, superconducting rings don't have resistance, but these systems, normal ones, do have a resistance. So I have to consider that also. Okay, so let's go through the some important points. In the superconducting ring, the current I'm assuming is changing from I1 to I3. Initial current is I1. Final current after 90 degree rotation, I'm depicting it as I3. You might think where is I2? I2 I'm considering is a constant inside this system. Okay, so keep the track. L and L prime are unchanged. I already argued that. M of the system, let's say changes from M1 to M2, initial to final, because you're rotating and the flux linkage changes. The superconducting ring doesn't have a battery. Please understand the currents that are generated in superconducting ring can uh, maintain themselves because there's no resistance in the ring. So there's no battery inside this, but you should visualize external system has an adjustable battery of EMF E. Okay, which, what is the duty of this adjustable EMF? It should maintain this current I2 throughout the rotation of this ring. And the very important formula, which is U of any system. I'm now talking about a system of these two together as a boundary, right? With the entire universe where the field lines of these two will permeate. Okay, so how do you calculate that uh, energy of magnetic field energy in the entire space uh, due to both of these? You will have a simple looking formula, which is half Li square of this one, half Li square of the second one, and the third term, which is the mutual energy between the two, which is M into I1, I2, right? I superconducting into I external. Okay, uh, in this third term, the I super is going to change as you rotate, but I external will remain as I2 in this problem, the way the problem has been worded. Okay, so these are the initial things that we note down before we embark on our solution of energy method. Okay, so I hope we are all set now. Let's move forward. So I have borrowed that picture so that you can have that in your mind as I do. Lot of things on the board. Don't fear, we'll go step by step. Just follow my lead. I'll try my best to explain it very sim in a simple manner and in an elaborate manner. Okay, so let's do this calculation first, okay? Now the, I said the superconductor's current changes from I1 to I3, right? But it is also given initially the value of that current is zero. Okay, so keep that in mind. So what is the value of that U1 of the system? What is my system? System is including superconductor and this current, whatever generating magnetic field, etc. this entire thing. So I should write half L I1 square plus half L prime. L prime is of this one, I2 square plus M I1 M1 into I1, I2. Remember, M initially is taken as M1. Okay, right. In this three term energy system uh, formula, the value of I1 was given zero, and the value of I1 here also is zero. So the initial energy is only due to half L prime I2 square. That this, this one is generating that energy. There's no mutual energy and there is no energy of this thing initially. Whereas U2, which is the final energy after 90 degree rotation, I can write half L into I3 square. Current has changed from I1 to I3. This term now doesn't change. Remember L prime doesn't change and the I2 was maintained. Okay, so that's why I rounded it off. And M2 into I3 into I2, remember? Uh, M1 has changed to M2, the current I1 has changed to I3, I2 remains as it is. This time, this term is not zero, okay? Now, what is therefore the change in this energy stored in space? Remember, where is the magnetic energy stored? It's stored in the entire space where the magnetic field lines are there. The space is not shown properly here. It is the entire space, okay, right? So the value of the delta U, when you subtract, these terms anyway are gone to zero. This term, even though it's non-zero, will cancel out in the subtraction, okay? No change in the external I2. So these two survive in the subtraction and give you this. So the change in uh, the magnetic energy is not half L I final square. It is actually having a mutual term also, right? So where is the mystery then? Why, why is the answer coming out to be only this? So let's go forward and see some more important uh, concept, which is writing KVL in the external circuit. So imagine this is a current carrying loop, right? You can go around that loop, use your KVL, right? And equate it to zero, right? Instead of doing that, whatever KVL equation I have here, I'll multiply it with I2 into DT and integrate and equate it to zero. Right? I, th I think I can do that, okay? So KVL would give you EMF, minus self EMF, right? This one's self EMF term would be what? L prime di2 by dt. 
and then there is a mutual emf also that will be developed that would be equal to this particular term d by dt of m into i super okay i super means i of this thing d by dt of any flux mutual flux is the mutual emf that would be developed minus you will end up having let me go a bit onto this side yeah i think you can see that now yeah so minus i2 into r i remember uh, i told you that there is a resistance also that would be there this is not a superconductor so it will contain a resistance current is i2 so minus i2 into r and all these extra i2 dt's i have added and this has become i2 square into r the reason for doing that is i want to convert kvl which is based on conservation of energy right into energy terms okay now what is integration of emf i2 dt inside this there is a cell inside this right when you write this this is the integration of power dt which is work done by battery okay now what is di2 by dt in the self and uh, inductance term in this self flux term di2 by dt is zero because someone has maintained this current remember that so this term is zero whereas this one d by dt of m i super why didn't i write m di by dt m di by dt is wrong because m is changing also so it's, it's d by dt of flux which is the emf okay so that's another important thing that you should note why did i write l di by dt here here l is a fixed quantity so this is another important lesson you learn here okay so d by dt of m i super into i2 into dt why didn't i write uh, any uh, current here remember i super itself is a variable uh, it's changing from i1 to i3 right so that's what i wrote so when you remove this dt and dt i2 remember it's a constant comes out it simply becomes integration of d m i super that means after integration of a, any dx it's the final value of mi super uh, minus the initial value of mi super which we know mi super uh, changes from uh, m2 into i3 and initial value of that um, i super is zero so it's it becomes only final value and this i2 which came out multiplied it which magically gives you this term remember that okay and this i2 square r dt we all know is the heat loss term okay so two terms survived go on to the other side of zero and make it work done by battery is equal to that mutual energy term plus the heat loss by resistance inside this so this is the equation written only for this uh, inside that for electrical energy okay right so now let's go back and check we got this as delta u and we got work done by battery inside this now for this entire system let's write the work energy equation for the complete system some of all works that are done how many works are done work is done by a battery inside this there is no battery remember in the superconducting ring but there is an agent who is holding this ring and turning it okay so work done by the mechanical turning agent this white term white which is what uh, irido asked us to calculate plus work done by battery inside this external system should be all the works are used in three forms right one is the change in magnetic energy in the space delta u change in kinetic energy if at all there was any for the ring right so ring was slowly turned from rest to rest position okay if nothing is mentioned then we have to consider that it started from rest and ended at rest so that delta ke of the ring is zero and then there is a heat loss that would be there so all these three changes are delivered because of the two works and now carefully observe w bat can be substituted for this right this so these two terms come here right and delta u will substitute here and you could clearly see the m2 i3 i2 and I heat loss from this side will compensate for this m2 i3 i2 inside this and the heat loss and therefore in the delta u after all the cancellations only half l i3 square will survive and therefore work done by the turning agent is half l i3 square but that is not equal to the value of delta u you should realize that the rest of the terms manipulated themselves to give you this answer there is no way any author can write this half li square just because it looks like a nice formula in the final answer in one step that is not correct either you do the torque method and realize this half li square answer or you should do this entire energy method to get to this answer and in the steps of realizing this you also learn how to calculate work done by battery in this thing and work done by the uh, 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 sorry change in the uh, delta u value of this particular system okay so there are extra learnings that you got when we realize work battery compensates for mutual energy and the heat loss terms and therefore gives you only self energy term for the external mechanical agent for turning 
okay i hope you like the way the solution was arrived at and uh, you will also like practicing this question which whose solution i'll give in the next olympiad workout series so this is a very interesting question no superconductor i know but it will have all the nuances of what we did in the previous two videos okay so let's see this um a square loop i'll just explain it very quickly you want to read it on your own do it and then comment your answer below and i'll come up with the solution within few days okay right so this square loop is made of two rigid l shaped rods okay so this is rigid here and rigid here but there is a hinge here and here so it's rotatable and it has a current i which is being maintained by a battery which is not drawn it's inside this system battery is there you have to assume that battery is maintaining this and this conducting rods um are given okay so uh, once uh, from this state you are going to rotate this lower half by 90 degrees about this hinge line okay so 90 degree rotation about hinges on the diameter and it acquires this so this red triangle or red l shaped rod is in the plane of the diagram and this blue one has come out of the plane of the diagram okay so from this state to this state someone has rotated it and due to this the magnetic field map in the space will change right right magnetic field lines will change and therefore the change in magnetic energy stored in space let's say take it as u the value of change from this state to this state is u in terms of this u two questions what is the work done by the battery inside this particular system uh, these four options mark one of them what is the work done by the mechanical agent in bending by rotation he slowly has turned it from rest to rest so what is that work done you have to answer it in terms of u very interesting the way you want to solve this i think in this situation you don't have any taught method so learning the previous energy method was will be useful for this olympiad level question okay i hope you will have a nice time trying this out and so will you have a nice time if you are going through the rest of the uh, important series that are going to uh, going parallel in this particular channel so all these are the series which cater to your needs as a physics student and enhance your understanding so please do visit these things links of all the playlists of these and many more series are in the description below please try them out and play three or four videos per day if you are new to this channel more than 150 videos so each one of them is very informative and very unique right you will uh, most probably not find the way uh, the discussions are done in this channel elsewhere okay so it would be nice experience and please do like and share this video and uh, do subscribe to my channel if you are new and also um, help me find subscribers by sharing this particular uh, content in whatsapp and telegram groups of relevant uh, friends of yours and liking the video will uh, um, help the youtube algorithm to re uh, recommend this video to more audience and thereby helping me grow my channel okay so right i'm feeling very motivated so within uh, two or three days i'll be coming up with more interesting videos so please do stay tuned to my channel and see you in the next one